There we go. We are recording. Hi, Sharifa. Hi. Thank you. And welcome to KGL TV. It's so nice to have you here today. Good afternoon, Reverend Kelly. I'm so excited. This has been a long time coming, but from the first time I met you, I loved your energy. So I am definitely excited to have this conversation. Oh, thank you so much for saying that. You're in the United States of America. Yes, in Long yes. Beach, California. In California. And I appeared on one of your shows before because you have a show and I appeared on it and I really was so excited to be able to speak to you later. And I'm glad that we stayed in touch and connected again. And thank you for joining me here today. So is it warm there? Because it's freezing here and there's lots of snow. Uh, no, we don't have snow in Long Beach, California. It was about 85, I think 83 degrees yesterday. It has been unusually hot. So we're enjoying um, February. <laughs> I guess so. Wow. That's wonderful. Um, so how is it down there? We're, we're like, you know, we're having a hard time up here in Canada with everything, but I hear it's a little bit more difficult in the States. Are you okay? We're okay now. I think, you know, it's been a year um, coming up March, but it's things are starting to open up. The hardest thing for us is when they, when it was a complete shutdown, we couldn't even do any type of outdoor dining. So outdoor dining is opening back up. Schools are opening back up. So it's like for us, the world is just starting to open back up. Yeah, that yeah. would have been hard to there. And luckily, you're virtual. Like your platform yeah. is virtual. Your show is virtual. So you were able to continue that throughout COVID. Tell us a little bit about your show, Sharifa. Well, my show, which is my baby and my passion, is the Roundtable Talk Show. And I launched the Roundtable Talk Show after my run for Long Beach City Council. So I always say they wouldn't give me city council. So I took the roundtable, but I am going to have a platform to have a voice to discuss current events and what's going on in the world. So we ended the election on March 3rd. I launched the Roundtable Talk Show on March 30th. And I just love this idea of a council of people coming together. So it's five guests her show, five shows a week. We do it every day, Monday through Friday. And the beauty, at least I think the beauty of the show is that with all of these guests, usually there's a particular topic or a particular theme, or maybe all of the five guests are in one industry. The Roundtable Talk Show is, is completely not like that. We take five random strangers, we put them in a conversation and wherever the conversation goes, that's where the conversation goes. So it's just been amazing to meet new people and to have conversations we may not typically have. Right. And people, they may not meet each other. They're coming from different areas and walks of life on your show. I love that you do that. Can yes. anybody be on your show that would be interested in finding you? Well, my main caveat more than anything else is they have to have a website because to me, that gives me information that is verifiable that at least they're in business, they're operating, they're doing something. And so that's the main thing. But I love to talk to people from different walks of life. They can be entrepreneurs, business owners, artists, entertainers, um, athletes. It's just this is your profession. This is your business. So I want to see your website to check out what you do before coming on the show. Yes, that's wonderful. That's and can they they don't have to be in the United States of America like they can be anywhere logging in because it's virtual. Yes, we've had shows where multiple guests were different sides of the world. Maybe somebody was in Ghana, somebody was in Canada, somebody was in Spain. Like people call call in from all over the world. And I always say there's a blessing in every curse. And for me, the blessing in COVID was that I know for a fact, 100%, I would have never had the success that I have with the Roundtable Talk Show if not for a global pandemic. Because prior to that, so many people were in this mindset, oh, I don't do Zoom, I don't do online networking, you know, I have to go out, I have to meet people. And then all of a sudden, the world was forced to use Zoom. So I have so many people who are at home, they're used to Zoom. We had an 80 year old lady who was on yesterday's show. It was her first interview, but she's been learning Zoom. So I'm like, Aww. it's a blessing to connect everyone from around the world. That's wonderful. Oh. I love that. And everybody can come together and, and just click a link. My computer's gonna die. I have to turn around. Hold on. <laughs> Hi, Sharifa. Okay, it's not going to die. It has time. We have time. Okay. We, 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 we. <laughs> okay, so you mentioned that you you this roundtable came to life after mm -hmm. the election. Can you yes. tell us a little bit about that election? You ran in an election. Tell us. Yes. No, that was fun. And and I had no idea what I was doing. I think that's what I learned from the election. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. I was going up 
against a candidate who this was his fourth time. He was actually the current city council person. So this was his fourth time running. So many people who had experience in politics. And so often I was like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. And I just did it. But I just learned through the process and I learned so much. I said, you know what? I really want to be in politics because my background, especially as a business consultant, is helping businesses, helping entrepreneurs. That's my focus. It was completely not politics. And so when I ran people were surprised but I always said to me it's not politics it's people and it's the same focus how can I help people I love that that's wonderful so you didn't win that election but it ended up um, allowing you for a platform for your own kind of council so it worked yes. out in the best way possible yes. anyway, right yes but you are president of another committee or another group uh, a recent uh, elect uh, elected president of that group. Yes. Would you tell us about that? Because that's incredible too, Sharifa. Thank you. That just happened this week. I was named the president of the Black Chamber of Commerce for the Long Beach area. So if anyone is in the surrounding areas from Long Beach to Lakewood to Linwood to Carson to Cerritos, Norwalk, Bellflower, anyone in those areas, you know, we launched the Black Chamber of Commerce. And one of the reasons I was so passionate about doing this is that during a global pandemic when there was assistance and PPP loans, only roughly approximately 3% of that funding went to black owned businesses. Oh. And when I learned that, I was like, oh my God, I have to do something. But it wasn't just because the money didn't go to them. A lot of the, the companies didn't have more than, you know, one employee, or maybe they were a solopreneur and they weren't, they hadn't, or maybe they hadn't got their business license or EIN numbers. And they basically weren't prepared or make, you know, like I said, they didn't have enough employees. So my focus is let's help these businesses get prepared and then let's help these get businesses get funded. Wow. That is incredible. Sharifa, you're such a, a powerful human. You have so much fire <laughs> that you want to fight for people's <laughs> rights. I love that. What, what made you become this way? Were you just born an activist? I don't know. I think the, when you say fire, I'll say that's the Aries in me. Like I'm fiery. I'm passionate. That's how I am. But I, I think it comes also from just being laid off eight times. You know, I, I'm a single mom. You know, I was divorced twice. And what I've seen is people talk about homelessness. I was I was homeless. But I also know that most Americans and that's black, white, Asian, Hispanic, whoever you want to count. Most Americans are about one paycheck away from being homeless. And so you have so many people or what they call the working poor. So they have jobs, but they still don't have enough to cover, you know, an emergency expense or maybe they got into accident or God forbid they got some disease and now their medicine requires them to pay a thousand dollars. So there was always something in me that said, OK, I went through this journey. What did I learn from this journey? And then I utilize that information, that knowledge. And sometimes it's not even the information and the knowledge. It's the resources. It's the relationship. So I can say, you know what? Talk to Reverend Kelly. Reverend Kelly can help you. She knows this. This is her area. And she has it down pat. So it's just bringing all those people together to be able to help someone in need. Wow. So you must have quite the database now, not just I from do. your show, but from running in councils and being part of that. So you are an excellent resource for people that yes. need help. Yes. Yeah. And so, you, uh, so you're so the president of the Black Chamber of Commerce. And is this a new development of the Chamber of Commerce? You said it was a new project. Is it just, are you the first president or is it a newer? Tell us. So you good, Reverend Kelly. You actually asked a just amazing question that no one else has asked over the last week. But to me, this is a story that is really near and dear to my heart. When I launched um, an aspect of my business or actually in Long Beach in roughly 2009, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to get my business out there. And I spoke with my mom and my mom said, Sharifa, you have to join the chambers. You have to join, you know, the Chamber of Commerce, join the Black Chamber of Commerce, join networking groups, get out there, meet people. And then you'll be successful in your business. So um, since it's a large area at that time, it was called the Carson Black Chamber of Commerce. And so I joined the Carson Black Chamber of Commerce and I met this lovely lady named Miss Sadie. Miss Sadie, it was amazing. And she was the president of the Carson Black Chamber of Commerce, which, of course, was over Long Beach. And she gave me this award in 2010 as the business consultant of the year. Now, me being me, young at that time, I didn't even go to the award ceremony. I was like, nobody's going to believe this business consultant of 
the year, you know, award. Like, what is that? Like, how many business consultants do you have? So I didn't go. Now, in 2017, when I was working with another company, I was taking this company public. We did an IPO, raised about $6 million. I received a phone call from a, a lady who was interested in purchasing stock. And she was talking. And finally, I said, Miss Sadie? Is that you? And she goes, yeah, who is this? I said, this is Sharifa Hardy. Remember me? Oh, I was in your, the, the Carson Black Chamber of Commerce, you know, and I, I reminded her, I said, you gave me this award. She said, you know what? I still have your award in my garage. Oh, I was like, wow. And so we went to lunch. And one month later, after that lunch, she passed away from cancer. Oh my God. And so, yes. And I was like, oh my God. And so the Chamber of Commerce for this area actually wound up being defunct because no one ever replaced Miss Sadie. So from 2017 to 2021, when I, I got up the other day and I said, you know what? Somebody has to help these people. I reached out to the main chapter, the Southern California Black Chamber of Commerce. And I said, if no one's going to do it, I'll do it. And they was like, Sharifa, go ahead. And that's what it came about. Oh, how proud would Miss Sadie be right now? Yes, yes, right? I, I believe that. Be I know that. Oh, yes, I'm so I know that. glad that she held on to that award and she was able to physically give it to you before she passed on. What a yes. beautiful story! She would I be know. so happy right now. Yes. Miss Sadie, look at your <laughs> Yes, I oh. believe that. I know that. I feel her spirit in everything I do, and I'm just. I'm just, and you know what? It's just so funny because I was sharing it with somebody. I actually have it right here. This happened if you can't see it. Oh, I love that. You can sort of see it. Yeah, you can sort of see it. Oh, that's so neat. Oh, it was like the whole so book. Yeah. But it was 2006 through 2010, the fifth year they that's were giving great. away these awards, and I won. And I got this book from Mrs. Sadie, Miss Sadie, yes. one month prior to her passing away from cancer. Oh, how oh. wonderful. Now, will you continue on with these awards, giving people, yes. yeah, you'll be the one who gets to yes. give the awards. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what, uh, Reverend Kelly, if the people don't come to the awards show yep. or the awards ceremony, I'm just going to hold on to them. You hold on to them because they'll come back to you 10 years later yes. or something. Yes. Ah! I love this. This is wonderful. How neat. Okay, so that's what you'll do. Will you be making some changes, do you think, within the Chamber of Commerce? And will they be to help black businesses? That doesn't seem right to me, Sharifa. 3%. That that's, seems very off. Yes, yes. Yes. Only a small um, percentage went to black owned businesses. Yes. Yeah. So we, we in Canada also have the same issue. Uh, we hear a lot of it. What's wonderful is during this month of February, we've heard a lot of people talking about this. A lot of the black community saying we, we don't have, there's less money going here, less heads of this, less business owners. So I've been asking people, what's something that we can do, like we, as in me with my privilege, people in communities here that could help the black voices that could help the black businesses. What's some stuff that we can do for that Sharifa to help? That, I mean, that question is always asked, and that's a question that I honestly never really have an answer for, because I always think that, you know, a person gives from their heart. You know, so if they feel like they're moved to do something or moved to support, you know, maybe there's a black owned business in their neighborhood, a restaurant. I mean, restaurants, all restaurants right now need patronage. But I think more than anything else, I think it's patronage that businesses need. I remember um, last year, right when everything went on with George Floyd, the George Floyd tragedy and Black Lives Matter. All of a sudden I started doing a lot of different panels, but I also provide marketing services and website design services. And I found one lady, she happened to be white, but she found me on a black directory. I think it was like blackbusinesses.com or something like that. And she said, you know what? I decided to go, we talked for a while. So she found out what I can do. But at the end, she said, I decided to go with you because first I wanted a female owned business and then I wanted a black owned business. And so you're the one I'm going with. And so that was a wonderful experience. So I always say, this, you know, people want to give money, but $5, $10, yeah, that's nice. But patronize these businesses. I think that's the most important thing. 
Wonderful. And and maybe promote um, mm -hmm. as best as we can and, and offer services wherever we can, a platform. That's what mm -hmm. I always think. Like, take my platform, whatever you need, you know, Here, here's my, use my voice, you know, and, and that's the way yes. that, that's kind of what I tell people that we can do as best. But as I think that can. came from your heart, though, and that's what I was sure. saying. Like, if that's what moves you yes. and you can be of service in that way, I think the most important thing is just to come from your truth, from your heart, from, from the thing that makes you feel better, you know, because every day I try Try to do something for at least at least one other person or one other business or one other company so if that's the one thing that you want to do i say reverend kelly go do that oh that's wonderful and you know what you do you promote people's lives you promote people's mm -hmm. businesses you share their stories so i don't think you're just doing it for one person a day Sharif. <laughs> i think you're doing it for many many every day and i and i send you my blessings and i say thank you for doing that because you are helping the world you are giving back and you're making the world a better place because you're here so thank you very much for that thank where you. can we find you miss sharifa hardy tell us where people can find you you can find me on my website at AskSharifa.com or just about every social media platform at, at Sharifa Hardy. That's Sharifa Hardy. That's wonderful. Thank you for joining us today. And I hope to talk to you again soon. I'd love to come back on one of your shows. Absolutely. Come back on the Roundtable Talk Show. We're booked until May. Okay. So grab a seat and we'll get to you in the future. I would love that. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today.